Greetings everyone and thank you for joining us for this week's edition of GTV. I'm Don Valiant and this is the news from Kyungi Province this week. Kyungi Province is home to more than 600 military bases. For residents in military facility protection zones, which account for half of northern provincial regions, the province has been pursuing SOC projects so as to alleviate hardships stemming from various zone restrictions. Road surfaces in this Pochon City community have been seriously degraded by the frequent passage of heavy vehicles to and from a nearby military base, causing difficulties for local residents. However, with support from Kyungi Province, Pochon City allocated 170 million Korean won to restore the roads. This project was made possible by a related ordinance aimed at addressing the hardships experienced by residents near military bases. 국가 안보를 위해서 그간 많은 희생을 감내해온 군부대 주변 지역 주민들에 대해서 특별한 보상 방안을 마련하기 위해서 도 차원에서 본 사업을 시행하게 되었습니다. Such military zone support projects are now marking their third year with 3.2 billion Korean won allocated for this year. A total of 26 projects will be implemented this year, beginning with the construction of drainage systems around a military base in Paju City for the prevention of farm flooding during the monsoon season. Other projects include the development of a forest trail in Gimpo City, the installation of electric safety signboards around a gunnery range in Yangpyeong County, and the creation of a community soccer field in Dongducheon City. In Kyungi Province, the 21st day of each month has been designated as Pet Adoption Culture Day. This year, related public events, which are attracting interest, are scheduled to take place online to facilitate social distancing during the COVID-19 pandemic. One such event was a live YouTube broadcast of pet specialists answering viewer questions about the adoption of homeless animals. This broadcast also included an event to connect adopters and homeless dogs. 어, 저희 주 씨는 일단은 외식혹이다 보니까 아무래도 활동량이 좀 많고 털이 많이 빠집니다. This live YouTube broadcast is scheduled to take place every pet adoption culture day, the 21st day of each month. 네, 경기도에서는 어, 유기동물의 안락사를 줄이고 입양 문화의 활성화를 위해서 어, 입양 문화 행사를 온 오프라인으로 2020년에 이제 하는데요. Each month, the broadcast covers different topics such as dog pounds, animal training, and pet grooming. It also shares information about foster care as well as adoption processes in the form of video blogs. Other contents include photo contests among adopters as well as sports and dance lessons for homeless animals. Program information can be obtained from the Creating Happy Families with Homeless Animals website. With drive throughs having become popular means of social distancing during the COVID-19 pandemic, a drive through agri-food market opened in rotation at a number of locations in Kyungi Province. At this drive through a line of cars approaches the agri-food sales area. All the drivers have to do is fill out and hand in orders while remaining in their cars. Salespeople then load the ordered items into the trunks of the vehicles. 이렇게 드라이브 스루 하니까 안전하기도 하고 이렇게 뭐다 이렇게 실어 주시고 하니까 편리하기도 하고 좋은 거 같아요. 믿음이 가고. At this market, shoppers can buy agricultural, marine and horticultural products at prices that are approximately one-third lower than those found at other markets. Purchases can be made with cash and credit cards as well as disaster-related basic income. 
This drive through market event was organized by the province to aid school meal suppliers who are affected by the delayed opening of schools during the COVID-19 pandemic. 지금 판매되고 있는 이 물건들은 당초 정상적인 상황이라면 이제 학교에 학생들이 먹어야 될그 식재료들인데요. 이제 코로나 사태로 이제 개교가 이제 연기되고 하면서 어 농민들은 이 재료들을 팔지를 못하고 시민 단체와 함께 이걸 그 다시 이제 아픔을 나누는 측면에서 지금 이렇게 이제 행사를 이제 마련하게 됐습니다. Since the first event held at the Suwon Sports Complex, this drive-through market has opened at 13 locations in the province, realizing total sales of 1.5 billion Korean won so far. 지금 한달반 됐습니다. 아, 총 13번의 그러니까 13곳에서 드라이브스루 방식으로 농산 판매를 이어가고 있습니다. 대략 14억에서 15억 원 정도의 매출입니다. The most recent drive-through agri-food market event was held at Imjingak on May 30th. In Yeoju City, a common workshop for youths titled Tomorrow Square recently opened. At this workshop, users can prepare for jobs or startups while interacting with each other in a comfortable environment. With an interior done in a comfortable cafe style, Tomorrow Square includes common spaces for use by youths as study rooms, meeting rooms, and offices, as well as a kitchen. Tomorrow Square is popular among students on tight budgets since all of its facilities are available free of charge, except on weekends. Tomorrow Square also offers diverse programs on job coaching, hobbies, and other cultural programs. It is expected to become an information sharing and networking center for youths in Yeoju City who had lacked such facilities. Yeoju에 살고 있는 우리 청년들이 같이 모여서 활동하고 같은 일을 하다 보면 좀더 행복하고 그러니까 도시로 더 나가지 않고 여주에서 좀더 행복하게 살수 있지 않나 싶습니다. The establishment of Tomorrow Square was one of the pledges undertaken by the current Gyeonggi Provincial Administration. Beginning with locations in the cities of Goyang and Gimpo last year, the Tomorrow Square will be established in six other cities this year and in two more cities next year. 청년 공간을 통해서 우리 그 지역 간, 시군 간그 정보 교류의 중심 지 역할을 할 것으로 기대하고 있습니다. 더 나아가서는 청년들이 적극적인 사회에 참여하는 그러한 그 공간으로 활용되기를 경기 provinces tomorrow squares are expected to become spaces that can help youths through difficult times and enable them to prepare for the future with private organizations playing greater roles in resolving social issues Gyeonggi province established a provincial support center for private social service activities in Suwon city on May 27th. The Ansan Citizens Association for Economic Justice, established by former local labor activists, operates with the aim of ensuring resident opinions are heard by public policy makers. Through various activities, this organization has achieved a number of successes, including the enactment of an ordinance that enables residents to operate autonomous activity groups. 다른 분들한테 알려내고 그 다음에 함께하는 주민들이 계속 예, 생겨나고 그거를 통해서 다시 또 이제 안산시가 변화되는 모습들을 볼 때마다 제가 이 운동을 하는 거에 대한 보람을 좀 느끼고 있는 것 같습니다. There are more than 2,000 NGOs operating in Gyeonggi province in diverse fields, including welfare, social services, and volunteer activities, as well as international exchanges. This new provincial support center will help those NGOs with operational issues. This center houses meeting rooms for collaboration between social service activists and civic groups, as well as a cafe for residents. It operates seven related projects, including in-house as well as on-site regional meetings. This center's first project will be the application-based provision of support for social service activities that contribute to COVID-19 responses. 도민들의 합리적인 의사가 도정에 즉각 반영되는 도민 주도의 행정의 실현을 위해 여러분도 
어, 커다란 역할을 해주시고 또이 공익지원센터가 제일 중요한 역할을 할 것으로 생각됩니다. Gyeonggi Province expects that the enhancement of NGO potential through the new Social Service Activity Support Center will help expand channels for resident participation in formulating and implementing policies. Thank you for joining us for this week's edition of GTV. We look forward to seeing you again next week.